Hello adventurers, welcome to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a mum of three from the UK. If you're a returning subscriber, you already knew that and you know exactly what this channel's all about. But if you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. This channel is all about home education with some lifestyle stuff thrown in, especially about mum life and parenting three children, two of whom are on the autistic spectrum. I'm so glad you're here. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I do a happy dance every single time you do. And let's get into the video. So today we are talking about curriculum planning and I've done a video on this before, but obviously it's kind of time based because that changes all that can sometimes change all the time. And I've had a couple of people ask, how do you plan what you're going to use? What are you planning to use next year? What are you using this year? And it's all in, always in a state of flux, at least for quite a few months. Um, and um, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, there we go. Um, and at the moment, obviously, we've used lots of stuff over the year, but then we've changed. Sometimes we'll get halfway into a book and I'll be like, you know, this isn't working for us anymore, so we'll switch it out. And that's happened with Bessie. Um, so Bessie is seven, as some of you know. And she's been struggling with learning to read for a really long time now. And we've got to the point where we're starting to query dyslexia. Um, so a good friend of mine called Hannah, who I know is a subscriber, hi Hannah, uh, suggested that I try a very specific literacy program with her called Toe by Toe. Um, it's a highly structured multi-sensory reading manual for teachers and parents and it's really, really good. I won't go into a huge amount of detail um, on it just because it's not what we're talking about in detail right now. I will do a video on it if anyone's interested. Um, but at the very beginning, she was getting things, she wasn't getting the right answers and it's all about repetition and by the third time she was getting them all. So um, it's, it starts off just by the phonics, phonics knowledge and then it moves to double sounds and we've taken a break for a little while um, just because we were really busy and we went on holiday but I'm going to get her back into it uh, this afternoon I think um, and it gets I mean if you look at the back it goes all the way through to you know reading paragraphs like this so um, she's pretty excited about finally actually being able to learn to read um, in a way that she can actually learn because phonics and sight reading just weren't working for her. Um, I've been there thinking about how am I going to get Albert to start learning to read and I did do a video on it a little while ago but um, really the issue was the fact that Bessie just wasn't progressing and now she is and she can see that she's progressing and that's giving her self-confidence a really big boost so that's something if you have um any queries of dyslexia or you just have a child who's maybe a little bit different maybe they're on the spectrum uh, maybe they're neurodiverse in another way this is really really good uh thank you Hannah to rec for recommending it to me uh, so the other couple of things that we are picking up, um, I decided to stop using the um, literacy books that I'd got from CPG just because it was like five different books to work from and it was just really really tricky and I just wasn't, I wanted a comp comprehensive literacy program, um, English program for Charles and CPG was the best one I'd found at that point and I just, it just trying to remember which book to use, it just wasn't working out. So um, I made him a book um, from Twinkle Resources, just covering all of the gaps in his learning, uh, mainly Key Stage 1 stuff that he has kind of struggled with, we're just going back over it. And then I got him this, so this is a nice Collins, brightly colourful cursive writing, he really wants to learn to do cursive writing, um, otherwise I wouldn't have bothered, and, um, and he does struggle with some letter formation to try and make it happen, um, so brightly coloured, this is an uh, age 4 plus, so it's not anything particularly taxing. It's just the letters and then it goes on to capital letters and then some writing, writing some words and stuff. I'm going to get him to do like a couple of page, like um, a page a week and then I'm going to photocopy them and get him to just do them multiple times, like just one page a day. Um, the other thing is, so, so we can't cover all three children, um, I'm also picking up this, I picked up this on Amazon a couple of days ago for Albert, um, it's an age three to five scissor skills book, um, I'll leave all the links to these in the description so you can see, and I just wanted to, because Albert's coming up to four and a half, oh, excuse me, next Easter he'll be compulsory school age, so I've been starting to think about what I want to do with him, um, I've decided that I'm not I'm not going to f like be like sit down do your work with him um, until he's seven but I will be sitting down with him 
and getting him to do stuff um, from September because he's way more ready than the other two were at, f at four and a half, five. Um, I'm gonna start doing some, we do, we've been doing flashcards with him, phonics flashcards to help his speech. Um, and I'm going to continue with those, go through, and also getting him doing some fine motor, fine motor skill stuff and getting him to write the, um, write the words. However, the reason, one of the reasons why we didn't start Charles and Bessie at four and a half, five doing homeschool work is because their fine motor skills were not up to scratch yet. Um, writing was just going to be too difficult for them. So that's why they started at seven. Whereas Albert's already doing very small buttons on a shirt or something like that. And the other two, Bessie still struggles with that. So, um, at three years older than him. So I think he's definitely ready for something more. He's definitely ready for something mathematical as well. He's really, really interested in counting things and he's really interested in shapes. Um, so I think I'm going to do, it's going to start reception level work with him at the time when he would have started reception um but just take it really really slowly and obviously because we are all year round schoolers we don't take breaks in the same way that schools do um he doesn't have to do as much all in one day so he may progress a little bit slower but um it's not going to be that much of a difference so yes but so one of the things i wanted to do was help him do some scissor skills and these are some really things so it's like it's literally like let's cut out a circle and cut out the tiger and when you've cut it out it then instructs you to colour in the picture which is right up his street and um, he is struggling holding the scissors at the moment um just getting that action of going like that but um it'll come in time it will come in time so he's really really liking this book so far he did get a bit frustrated with it so it may be that we just change up the scissors instead of having regular scissors I get him the ones that you hold in your hand and you go like this because they are better and I'm also going to do some tweezers stuff with him um, using the big plastic tweezers that we have um, and and giving getting that this action getting his hand um, getting his hand you know developing the muscles a little bit and see see how he gets on so a couple of things I'm thinking of using, obviously I will do a curriculum video um, in my not back to school week with my definites of what I am definitely using and I will have the physical stuff with in front of me then. Um, but just to give you guys some stuff to look at while you're potentially deciding what curriculum you're going to be using um, in the coming year, if that's what you do, obviously if you're unschooling you can just stop listening now. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to be using... I'm going to continue using power maths for mathematics for all of them. Um, I'm not going to be using power maths reception for Albert because it's really dull. <laughs> it's not great. And it does need the massive teacher books to kind of, um, you know, add to what's in the little tiny books that they do. Um, so I won't be using that for him. I'm going to be using the Schofield and Sims uh, maths books for him for, for his reception year. Um, they're very, very good. They have a home educators discount, takes them down from 3 95 a book to 3 50 a book. And I love them. They're really bright and colorful, really engaging. And they're, they're English, English curriculum. So I don't have to change anything. Like if I was buying an American curriculum, um, and then with him we will be staying with Read Write Inc as a phonics program and I've talked about Jolly Phonics and I've talked about Easy Peasy Homeschool um, and I did think about using those because we have the resources already um, but I've decided to stick with Read Write Inc because those were the flat just just because I bought the flashcards I bought Read Write Inc flashcards Albert loves them and I was like oh okay we might as well stick with Rewrite Inc now he really likes it he's really progressing with it and um, is recognizing a lot of s sounds um, and the letters already and is blending already he's I, I think he'll be reading by the time he's five um, which is amazing and I really hope that Bessie catches up a little bit as well because I think she'll be really annoyed if she turns eight and he turns five and he's reading and she's not so um, making sure that um, you know everyone's progressing in their own time but also that nobody's feeling sad or left out can be a bit of a struggle and a bit of a juggle but it's okay um so yes so I'm going to be doing the read write ink with him um I'll put some links again down in the description of the things I'll be using for him he is four he will be five at the end of January um so you don't have to start doing hardcore stuff with them as soon as they're little my first thing would be teach them like let's let's try reading or try maths or um you know just preschool workbooks the preschool workbooks that they do um i'll leave a link in the description to my favorite one that i i love using with them and you could just start with that for a reception like a kin um a, a preschool workbook a pre-k workbook um because it covers everything that they learn in reception really so 
Um, with Bessie, we're going to stick with the toe by toe. Um, we're going to be doing some writing with that as well. She's going to have a cursive workbook as well. Um, we're going to do some handwriting um, just to get her into the habit of writing and build up those muscles in her hands. Um, and as oh, excuse me, <laughs> and stick up, stick with the toe by toe. Um, I'm not worried about comprehension or punctuation, grammar, spelling, all of that sort of stuff just yet because I want to get her reading first. Um, so that's my priority for her. Um, she'll be moving up to um, year two or level two power maths from year one, um, which she's very excited about, which means I'll be teaching it again because that's what Charles is completing now and he'll be moving up to year three power maths. Um, we're also going to be doing some more Sharty Mason kind of stuff and I will be talking about that in other videos coming up, um, kind of changing our home education style a little bit to be more less eclectic and more Charlotte Mason um, in certain areas. So we'll be doing nature study more regularly um, and trying to bring in some faith practice into that as well from a um, spiritualist point of view. Um, and we're also going to be... Um, doing more art and more um I'm going to be introducing artists to them I have a great curriculum um I think it's just I just here we go I can just grab it from my shelf oh, and while I'm here I was saying about um, the pre-K workbook that I like, this is the one, Brain Quest. You've heard me talk about Brain Quest before. If you are a returning subscriber or you've checked out my other curriculum videos, Brain Quest, I love Brain Quest. Um, I would be starting, I'm going to be doing, um, doing, you know, you have this, you have this, this would be a great start. Um, all the Schofield and Sims Early Years Foundation books, which again, I will link in the description. Um, but these are great. They also have summer books, which are really good. Um, so this is the art curriculum that we have. It's called Meet the Artists, a 20 week hands on art and art history curriculum. Um, I'm not going to be doing loads of it, to be honest, um, because like we've just done Frida Kahlo, for example. So it's a lovely, um, lovely self portrait of Frida Kahlo. And um, the, the tutorial is Charles doesn't really like painting, so um, like we don't follow it to the letter because he doesn't like painting. But we talk about the artist, excuse me, <laughs> and then we talk about the photo a little bit. There's some questions um, in it. So, for example, it's Frida Kahlo self portrait, so obviously, we would do a self portrait and then it's like where is Frida why do you think she's standing in the middle and he's kind of like I don't really care why she's standing in the middle it was a weird picture um he didn't like it but we decided so we just looked at it and we talked about Frida Kahlo and her life we read her biography on here the little bi biographical bit and then we did our self-portrait and we channeled our inner Frida as it says here and um used bright colors and shapes in the background and um and then we had, um, and we do have a book that she's in, so we read a bit more about her in there as well. And that's literally just what we did. It's just an excuse to be creative with a little bit more structure. But I don't encourage them to create in a structured way because I feel like they should just be able to create and it'd be fine. I'm um, actually going to be setting up a creation station for them um, downstairs in the lounge. We have this lovely little bar area type thing um, that I'm going to set up as a free creating area so there's going to be card and googly eyes and pipe cleaners and glue and paint and um all sorts of things crayons markers that sort of thing um so they and they will be allowed to freely get that out and um with the agreement that i will tidy it up at the end of the day for them as long as they keep it in that space because what i don't like is like finding creative outbursts explosions um all over the house <laughs> because then i'm like i shouldn't have to clear this up all the time guys it's not my mess i don't mind you making mess but i don't want to have to clear it up so um i'm going to talk to them about making this having this creation station and saying to them you can create as much as you like but keep it in the space as long as it's in the space i will clear up for you and you don't have to do that um i have to change my battery one thing there we go that's better um so sorry i just put a bit of star trek on while i was uh, changing the battery oh don't fall over now um so yes so we're going to be doing that a little bit more um and then mainly going to be doing um following their interests when it comes to everything else 
Um, I, to be honest, I was getting fed up of ticking off boxes in my head of, oh, they've done this, oh, they've done that, oh, they've done this. Um, they've done this subject, they've done this subject, because that's not what they want to do. It's not what I want to do. That's not what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to prepare them. We're not trying to do school at home. And sometimes I forget that. Even though I've been doing this for five years, even though they've never been to school, even though I've had a YouTube channel for two years about... <laughs> about home educating um i sometimes still forget that we are not doing school so um we're going to be doing unit studies and i'm going to ask the children to think of a question that they don't know the answer to and then we're going to make posters answering the question um or a paper mache volcano like you know how far do volcanoes erupt? Um, okay, let's make a paper mache volcano and make a good guess. Um, that sort of thing. You know, we're going to make dioramas, as uh, the Americans call them, and I make posters. And one of the things that Bessie's really interested in right now is penguins. We got some plastic toy penguins to play on a tough tray with, and she um, she said, how do penguins hunt? And I was like, I don't know. She's like, do they have teeth? Do they, do they err like that, like a lion? And I was like, no, I don't know. I don't know, I've never seen a penguin hunt before. And she said, oh, okay, well, can we find out? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So we're gonna make a poster. Um, how do penguins hunt? Uh, we're gonna make it glittery and we're gonna put penguins on it. And we're going to um, then stick up on the wall. My plan is that every time they do one of these unit studies where they make, they answer their question and they do a poster, I'm then going to hole punch them. And I'm gonna spread them through and then make them a big book. So each year they'll have a book of all of the unit study things that they did. One, it's good because I can show samples of their work if I need to, but also because that's really, really cool. <laughs> um, it's really fun. So and I, I may take pictures of them and then turn them into a photo book at the end of the year instead. I might do that instead, um, but I will lace them all together as well. I have a big, big project book, which will be really fun. Um, so yes, that's what we're gonna do. I think Charles wants to learn about the respiratory system, so that's our plan for him. He's going to, um, his question is, how, do, do, how does a human's respiratory system work? So that's the question we're gonna ask for him. Uh, Albert just wants to know about Minecraft, so. Do I have to do a project on Minecraft? Yes, the answer is yes, I have to do a project on Minecraft. He doesn't have a question though, he was just like, I think his question might be, why doesn't mummy like Minecraft? I could give him a unit study worthy of the name of all the reasons why I hate Minecraft. <sighs> and Roblox also, but you know, that's a story for another day. I do have a video on screen time coming up at some point. So thank you so much for joining me for this video and I will see you on Friday.